want to thank you all for coming to this developer uh, track of Scaling New Heights. It's great to see some very familiar faces, but also to see some new faces here. It's very exciting for me to see this growth in the ecosystem. Um, and I wanted to actually leave you with uh, three points for the, from my piece of the, uh, of the discussion. One is I want to talk a little bit about the cookbooks ecosystem. I know you guys have heard a lot about it. How many of you guys have actually seen some of the marketing uh, literature and some of the websites that talk about the ecosystem? Not too many? Okay. How many of you guys are very clear on what we mean by the QuickBooks ecosystem? Okay. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about. Let's, let's, get, let's get on the same page about what we mean and what it means to you guys as developers, because clearly our third-party developers are an integral part of the ecosystem. And I want to talk a little bit about how you guys play an active role and a big role in that ecosystem. For some of the new folks here, I also want to give a little bit of uh, idea about the QuickBooks companies, like who are these customers that are signing up for QuickBooks Online? What do they look like? What industries are they in? Et cetera? What, what type of small businesses are they in? Some of you may have seen this, but it's actually it's good to, to update it with more current data because there's been a lot of change inside QuickBooks Online and the, and the community that, that adopts QuickBooks Online. So I want to share some of that with you. And then third, I want to talk a little bit about apps.com. Uh, it's been a long journey. I think it was last year at Scaling New Heights that I talked about launching apps.com in a, in a small pilot and how we changed essentially the experience from a Annapolis thing to more of an experience for the customers to be able to find the apps that they need. And we've essentially recently gone 100% to apps.com and I want to share some of the metrics that we've seen from essentially making that switch. Okay. So how many of you guys, I know there are some folks that have been here for quite a while and listening to us and, and working with us and partnering with us. Some of you guys are new. I just want to get a sense of who's in the audience. How many of you guys actually have been to either a Cloud Jam or a developer track in a previous conference? Okay, good. About, I would say, what, 25% of you guys? And then the rest of you guys, if you're hand, if you're, this is the first time you've actually heard IPP speak to you guys. Excellent. Well, lots of new, lots of great excitement for the platform. It's super exciting. Uh, so let me talk about what we mean by the QuickBooks ecosystem. And we talk about the ecosystem being more than just finance and accounting. Right? As Avi mentioned, our vision is to make the QuickBooks ecosystem and the platform the small business operating system behind small business success. And that doesn't always necessarily mean finance and accounting. Because quite frankly, in most businesses, finance and accounting is not the center of the universe for those businesses. Typically, it's the, op it's the system or the software that they use to manage money in. Right? So if you're a retail industry, Oftentimes, it's the point of sale. Right? If you're a services-based businesses, it might be an invoice-based system like ours. Right? But what our, vis our vision is actually to create a platform that integrates all the tasks, all the functions that a small business needs to do to run their small business in the cloud. Right? Anywhere from acquiring customers. So we have some apps today in the ecosystem that are doing that. So things like Salesforce, Method CRM, those are apps that help small businesses today work with QuickBooks today that help them essentially acquire new customers. Right? Once you acquire the customer, then the work starts. Right? Then you start managing the work or, the manage, or manage your projects. And we have apps today in the ecosystem that help our, our small business customers do that, so apps like Mavenlink. And we're starting to get even some vertical apps, like in the construction business, a new app came on board called Builder Trend that allows construction companies essentially to manage their projects. And we're going to see more and more of that, right? Uh, from horizontal applications that are coming onto the platform to much more specific vertical ones that address a customer's specific problems in their space. Okay? So once they're managing their work, if it's a product-based company, obviously you need to manage inventory. Right? This is where products like apps like SOS and Lettuce, as Avi mentioned, we recently acquired Lettuce. Uh, not necessarily, as Avi mentioned, not for the inventory app itself, but to open our platform for inventory-based data. Right, Lettuce has an excellent API to essentially be able to open that platform up for product-based uh, data. And this is a clear um, sort of definition of where we want to go with our core functionality. Okay. Uh, managing inventory, and of course, uh, if you have labor, if you have workers, you have to track time and expenses. Right? And we have uh, several apps on the platform today that help a small business track time and track their expenses. Right? From T-sheets for doing time tracking, ability to do time tracking and billing, et cetera. And of course, every business has to pay bills. Right? Managing cash flow is oftentimes king. Right? So how do I manage uh, the bills and, and manage my cash flow at the same time? And we have a couple of apps in that space as well. And then, of course, getting paid. Every business needs to get paid and get paid on time. Right? So apps like FundingGate, Zencash, Fundbox have different approaches, but essentially to the same problem of how do I get paid faster for my customers and still maintain that relationship? 
And of course, once you get paid, you can actually put those resources back into acquiring customers. So it's a complete life cycle right, of how to, what a small business needs to do to run their business. And it's our platform that essentially enables these small businesses to do that in the cloud. Okay. Make sense? Okay. So why is this important? Right. So we've always been talking about we, want, we know small businesses are moving to the cloud. Why are they moving to the cloud? And what is it, what's in it for them? Right? One is, as you know, every small business is unique. Every small business is different. Right? So by integrating your apps into our QuickBooks platform and the QuickBooks ecosystem, it essentially customizes their experience. Right? As I mentioned, if you are a wholesaler or manufacturer, you may be interfacing with QuickBooks and its data through a manufacturing and inventory system. It's going to be a very different experience, right, if you're an e-commerce company integrating essentially with QuickBooks, but your experience is probably going to be through a shopping cart or uh, an inventory system or e-commerce system. Okay. So it's important for them to essentially get the experience that they need. And of course, by having your apps integrate with the platform, sharing the data, that of course saves them time for not having to do duplicate data entry, right, saves them time, but also duplicates that entry and also improves accuracy, right, because they don't have to enter that data twice. And I think one of the more important things about having this ecosystem is you don't want all your workers right, to access the information that they need out of QuickBooks through QuickBooks. Right? So if I'm a field rep, I may need the customer information that's inside QuickBooks, but as a small business owner, the last thing you want to do is let them go in there and be able to look up, pull up that customer information, but also be able to see what the expenses are, payroll, and see how you're doing in your business. Right? So these apps enable essentially the exposure of that data on a need-to-know basis. Right? So it's, Clearly very important for us. We, we often say that QuickBooks doesn't do everything, right, but we think our data can. Right? And it's up to you guys essentially to utilize date, that, that data to allow our small businesses to run their business in the way that they need to. Okay? And why is it important for you as developers? Clearly, I think it better serves your customers. Many small businesses today are QuickBooks customers. Right? And you've probably the reason I think you're here is you've probably heard from some of those customers that you should be integrating with QuickBooks so that I can actually see that data flow back and forth from my back office to whatever app you're, you're currently using. Okay. It also makes it much more easier for, our, uh, for you guys when we develop our platform to develop and integrate the services against that, right, to clip, create those open APIs. Right. And of course, I think one of the big reasons that you guys are coming onto the platform right, is to reach the 5 million plus small business customers that are today current QuickBooks customers. Okay. So I always look at our job as sort of a, there's two fronts to it. One is we need to make you guys successful in coming onto the platform, right? That's sort of the front side of it. But an equally important part of it is once you're on the platform, exposing you guys to our customer base, so allowing you to reach essentially our millions of small business customers. And I wanted to share some of this data around QuickBooks. The QuickBooks online uh, system has been growing at a remarkable pace. Right? And we've been talking about QuickBooks online moving to the cloud essentially, essentially for the last couple of years. And it's kind of interesting for me because I've been going to Scaling New Heights and the other conference that shall be unnamed uh, for the last four years. And we've been talking about it. And the first couple of years, it's always been sort of a pushback right, in terms of when are you guys going to do more stuff on the desktop, et cetera, when are you going to create more SDKs, et cetera. Last couple of years, it's been completely opposite. It's been, why aren't you guys developing enough APIs for the QuickBooks Online system? Right, so I think what's happening is customers are moving that route, and you're seeing that customer growth into the cloud. I think recently we've announced over, six, over 650,000 QuickBooks Online subscribers. Right, I would suspect that no forecasting, no projection, but we're going to reach a million pretty damn soon. Okay? And that's going to be a major milestone, not only for us, but for you guys, right? because I think today, one of the questions that I keep hearing from all of you and for, uh, around developing on desktop or online is, well, desktop has the base, you know, so I have to actually develop on desktop to create that ROI. I don't think that argument's going to hold much, more, lo much longer for the next, in the next few months. Right? There will be a million small business customers on QuickBooks Online, and that is where the growth is, and I suspect that will be a, a, a big incentive for you guys to develop on the online system. And I want to sort of point out at the very end here, in the last quarter, just sort of the trajectory change, the, the angle change, right, of this growth. Um, we have increased uh, the subscription rate, not only for new subscribers to QuickBooks Online, but we've also seen a remarkable increase in the number of desktop customers that have migrated from desktop to online. 
and coupled that with our growth in the global regions uh, that we're focusing on in the Australia, UK, Canada, and India market, that has all contributed to this remarkable growth for QuickBooks Online. Okay. For those of you uh, curious, well, who are those customers, right? If I'm building an app, uh, what type of customer should I be looking at? Clearly, half, more than half of those customers are in the services business, professional services. If you think about lawyers, legal or, or, uh, professions, uh, consultants, IT consultants, professional services make up more than 50%. And then you can see the other uh, verticals represented appropriately uh, amongst, the, amongst the ecosystem. And these are small businesses. And when I mean small businesses, it's kind of interesting. When we talk to other partners, you know, definition of small businesses sometimes differ. When we say small businesses, we mean small businesses. Right? The typical QuickBooks Online customer in the median number has anywhere from one to five employees. And some, some partners, some companies might call those micro businesses. But these are your mom and pop shops, you know, folks who are starting up small businesses and essentially growing them. Okay. And typically, on a median level, they have annual sales anywhere from 100,000 to 200,000. That ranges sort of depending on what verticals, uh, vertical you are. So when we say QuickBooks Online, small business, this is sort of the makeup, you know, in terms of the trip that they're typically in a services industry. Right? They typically have anywhere from one to five employees, W-2 employees, right? And they're typically making an annual sales anywhere from 100 to $200,000 a year. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of um, what QuickBooks customers look like. As I mentioned, so let me switch a little bit on, on apps.com. How many of you guys have your apps, had your apps listed on App Center? Okay. okay, awesome. So App Center is what you see here on your left. Right? Very typical, looks very much like a typical app store where you essentially see a wall of apps. Right? And essentially we, just, we play the more popular apps. We have different tabs, the types of apps that you want to look at. The customer feedback from that was it's very daunting, right? because I don't know where to start. And quite frankly, the QuickBooks customer today doesn't actually know, doesn't have a good feel of what we mean by an app. Right? And so they need more information, they need more sort of curation. And so we switched over to a new model where actually depending on the size of your screen, we weren't actually even showing an app on the home page. Right? We were showing essentially content. Right? And you can see that the most popular ones, we tested this with different types of content, in those two white boxes, the most popular one that was clicked was just simply, what are QuickBooks apps? Right? What do we mean by that? Right? And there's a good article there that talks about what we mean by QuickBooks app, how it integrates with QuickBooks and stuff, and how it can help streamline data, uh, data essentially uh, uh, workflows across your various systems. Okay? And then we also tested different types of articles around specific apps or categories of apps and such. And typically, when we do these tests, what what wins out are those content that provides more of a higher level, more educational piece about what apps are. Okay? Now, this is all fine and good, right? We're educating the marketplace and stuff, but that's not why we're in business. Right? But what we also found remarkably was when we switched from App Center to apps.com, the conversion was at 200 index, which means it was two times better on apps.com than it was on App Center. Okay? And the reason that is is because we got a lot more clicks. So what we ended up doing with apps.com was is that as they're clicking through this content, we were essentially qualifying those visitors, right? essentially explaining to them what apps.com is. If I'm considering a, uh, a CRM app, well, depending on what type of company I am, right, my requirements for CRM is going to be very different. And by having those type of articles, it qualifies them to essentially get to the right path. Right? And what happens then is then they get to the right app or set of apps, and then the conversion is better. Right? So that's a remarkable thing for us to see you know, not only higher engagement in all the metrics in terms of lower bounce rate, just higher click-throughs, right? but most importantly, at the end of the day, at the end of the funnel, the conversion rate was two times better. Okay. So we just recently went 100% to apps.com. We're continuing to add more content. Probably some of you have been solicited to providing content if you're a subject matter expert in any particular area. And I suspect like small businesses who start their business, you have a passion in the space that you're in and probably have a point of view about what the best things to do are in that space. So we welcome you guys to actually contribute that right, and, put, and post it onto apps.com. gives you a little bit more exposure, but also positions you not just as an app developer, but as a subject matter expert right, for these small business customers coming through. Okay. So let me close with, well, how does that all tie together? Okay, so as I showed you earlier, the QuickBooks online subscription growth has grown. Right? And along with that, and I'll start off on the, on the right-hand side, the orange bars there are QuickBooks 
or apps that are subscribed to QBO, uh, QBO apps, subscribers to QBO apps, versus the blue, which is subscribers to QuickBooks desktop apps. And you can see the trajectory of QBO app subscriptions going up as the QBO subscribers go up, right? And we also know in the past that QBO users, QBO companies are actually more open to subscribing to an app because they're already on the online ecosystem. They're already using SaaS, right? And so they're, they're very familiar with apps are. And we've seen much better conversion from that set of customers than from more traditional desktop customers. Okay? Uh, in terms of what are, what are the categories of apps that our customers are interested in, and you can see some of the metrics up there in terms of the top ca app categories. This is just measured by, uh, there's different pages inside apps.com that talk about certain categories of apps, and this is the percentage of uh, click-throughs that are coming into those pages. So clearly mobile is of high interest, right, because when people think of apps, they think, hey, I want to be able to access this from my iPad or my iPhone, right? So mobile apps are very important. Uh, billing and invoicing followed, CRM, financial management, data import and export. Those are the areas in apps.com that visitors are coming through. And we get a ton of visitors. Right? Uh, over any particular month, we have one million unique visitors coming to apps.com. Right? So we drive a lot of traffic to this store, you know, coming from multiple sources. Um, and some of those are folks that are just signing in for an app. Right? Others bounce, as any website bounces. But every month, Typically, we get over 500,000 shoppers. And by shoppers, I mean folks that are actually clicking through to a page that talks about apps or categories and such, not necessarily just a login page, and they don't bounce. Right? And from that, we drive about 100, you know, a little bit over 100,000 views to the individual app cards. And by app cards, I mean these are the pages that represent a particular single app. Right? So they can read, essentially, what you guys have written about what your app does and how it, how it serves small businesses. Okay? So there's lots of traffic. Uh, it's going to grow even further, as you can imagine, as QBO continues to grow and becomes more, uh, make, as, as it's strategic to, to into it. And you'll see, essentially, um, this set of metrics grow along with that. Okay. I think we'll take uh, questions at the end, but is there any dying or pressing questions that you guys are wanting to ask? Let me, let me repeat the question. I think the, que the question is really about, what are we doing with Intuit Marketplace? Yes, so just let me give a little bit of background. Right? We have actually two app stores today, as some of you may know. Right? We have IntuitApps.com, which, which are apps, which has apps that are essentially integrate to the platform through the Intuit Partner Platform, it's, and it's pure cloud-based integration. And we also have a, a marketplace that's been around for several years called Intuit Marketplace that are essentially where apps that are integrated through desktop to desktop through the SDK. Now, last November, uh, we announced that we were actually no longer taking um, apps integrated to the desktop on IPP. And we were asked essentially that developers that want to integrate to the desktop to essentially integrate back to the SDK, right? and that we would essentially provide support and continue that. That continues to be our strategy. So the marketplace still exists today. There's been very little change in it, and frankly because there has been sort of been very little activity on that page, on that site. Right? Clearly for us, the strategy is apps.com. And so apps.com meaning it's an online ecosystem. And so a lot of the resources are being invested into apps.com and the online ecosystem. And let me sort of give you the rationale of, of why that's the case. Right. Yeah, the traffic to Intuit Marketplace has, has essentially dwindled down, right, because we don't market it very much, actually at all, as you pointed out. Yeah, and that's because that is not the strategic direction where we're headed, right? So we are asking if you want to integrate the desktop, integrate through the SDK, right? But clearly, I think you can see that the strategic direction for Intuit is on the online ecosystem. And so, we're, and the reason we're doing that is because when we were trying to do both, it essentially slowed down the online growth, the online APIs, right? And so what we decided to do from a strategic standpoint, and really from listening to what our customers were saying, is that invest your time in the online APIs and accelerate that. Don't slow it down by trying to do both. And essentially it's what we did. Let me sort of close this off, and we can discuss it more on the panel if you like. But really, the strategic direction is apps.com, right? And so you can imagine that we've had several discussions that multiple app stores for Intuit doesn't make sense, right? And so essentially strategizing of how do we unify these marketplaces. So it's not going to be this way, you know, as a long-term strategy, right? But we do need to combine those. And, and I don't have anything to share with you in terms of how we do that now. But um, there, we do recognize the fact that there are apps today that integrate with desktop that need to be essentially marketed to the right customers. And we want to unify that under one unified app store. Yeah, so I recognize that question, and I'm getting the sort of hack sign across in the back there. No, 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 for me, taking too much time. But 
again, let's, let me close that off by saying that we recognize the fact that there are two app stores today, and that's not a long-term strategy. Right? So we need a place, essentially, obviously, for people to find the right apps for them. Right? And so that is something that we've been talking about. I just don't have anything to share with you at this time. Okay. Traffic. These are uh, page visits to these category pages. Okay. So I think I've been given the hook, and let me hand off to Lori. Uh, she can talk more about uh, some of the developer relationship that we're having. Okay. Mm -hmm.